Over the weekend, there was a major gathering of conservatives in Tampa, Florida. It was the annual Student Action Summit of the pro-Trump youth group Turning Point USA, and its featured speakers included Donald Trump, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gaetz, and Ron DeSantis, among others. But you know who else showed up at this gathering outside of it? People with Nazi signs. A warning, this imagery is disturbing. Demonstrators armed with swastikas, SS flags, and even one banner that read DeSantis Country showed up in downtown Tampa shouting slurs at counter-protesters. A spokesman for TPUSA quickly denounced the group, saying in part that TPUSA 100 percent condemns those ideologies in the strongest of terms and adding that the neo-Nazis have nothing to do with the organization. Governor DeSantis's office and his campaign declined to comment, pointing to a past rally by neo-Nazis in January, where he eventually referred to demonstrators as jackasses. But here's my question. If TPUSA doesn't like Nazis, why are people with Nazi signs showing up to the convention to express their support? Why could that? I'm Ted Cruz, and my name is Kiss My Ass. They've turned our classrooms from places of education to ones of indoctrination. Do not let these miserable losers, these godless, soulless people, rob you of the joy that is your birthright and your destiny. They believe in left-wing gender ideology and toxic critical race theory. We believe in two genders. There are men and there are women. Two our America is not for the thugs and the criminals who would burn our cities and murder our fellow Americans in the name of some bullshit social justice. Yeah, I also call myself a Christian nationalist. And that's not a bad word. That's actually a good thing, right? Get ready for battle. Put on the full armor of God. Take a stand against the left schemes. Stand firm with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Vilifying the left as globalist, gender-hating, nation-destroying communists? Check. Preparing for an ultimate battle wearing the full armor of God and the belt of truth? Check. And let me remind you that this was a meeting of student activists. TPUSA is a youth group. Not just any youth group, but a youth group that had to apologize for tweeting an anti-Semitic joke in 2017. A youth group whose South Florida chapter was caught the following year trading racist memes and rape jokes on an internal chat. TPUSA denounced those chats and promised an internal investigation. But last fall, their America Fest in Arizona attracted a convention of white nationalists just across the street. TPUSA did not comment on that when asked by the Arizona Republic newspaper at the time. This is a group whose founder, Charlie Kirk, had said on Twitter in the lead up to January the 6th that he was helping send, quote, 80 plus buses full of patriots to Washington and who deleted the tweet after the violence unfolded that day. A spokesman for TPUSA says it was really seven buses and it wasn't their group that organized them, but Kirk's other group, Stu for Trump. This is a movement that not one, but two major Republican Party presidential contenders, Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis, have happily, enthusiastically engaged with. And let's be clear, they are not actual Nazis. They have occasionally even disavowed Nazism. But that still leaves the question that they should probably reckon with. Why in America in 2022 do people with Nazi signs gather at their events? Joining me now, Carlos Cabello, former Florida Republican congressman. He's now an NBC News and MSNBC political analyst. Uh, Carlos, you're a Republican. You're in Florida. You saw this TPUSA conference over the weekend with some of your former colleagues in the Republican Party in Congress attending and speaking. What struck you most about it? Well, Matty, what you're referring to is uh, this culture that Donald Trump has implemented, which is, you know, as long as you support Donald Trump and you believe in him, you're welcome anywhere. It doesn't matter what else you believe in. It doesn't matter if you're a fascist, a communist. Uh, as long as you believe in Donald Trump, that's all he cares about, which is why he has always welcomed uh, all these uh, fringe elements. Uh, it's why he has repeatedly refused to condemn uh, groups like this openly uh, and in a clear way, because for Donald Trump, the only thing that matters is that you support him. And obviously, that has uh, infected uh, parts of the Republican Party as well. And there are plenty of Republican politicians out there that are very welcoming of anyone who's willing to show up at a rally and chant their name or 
go to a voting booth and mark their box. So while Turning Point USA condemned the Nazi presence, GOP governor, presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis from your state, declined to comment on it. And it's not the first time. Back in January, when he was asked by the ADL to denounce a neo-Nazi rally in Orlando, he instead railed against the media. His spokeswoman even tweeted, quote, do we even know they're Nazis, a tweet she quickly deleted. His opponent in the last governor's race said DeSantis may not be a racist, but the racists sure think he's racist. Is that by design? Well, Matty, what Ron DeSantis should do, especially if he's considering running against Donald Trump, which everyone expects by now, is draw a contrast and show that he's willing to uh, single out these groups and call them for what they are and make sure they know that they have no place uh, in, uh, in, in American politics if they're going to express themselves with hate or, um, you know, if they're going to affiliate with, you know, whatever the label is, Nazi, you know, racist labels, whatever it is, there are uh, currents that should be excluded uh, from our politics. And, of course, they can participate in any way they choose, but no leader should be welcoming that participation. Uh, on the contrary, they should be condemning it. And if Governor DeSantis uh, is aware uh, that this group was there, he should say that he doesn't want to have anything to do with them and that he disagrees with them. And just to remind our audiences, it was another TPUSA summit last year where an attendee asked this chilling question. Have a listen. At this point, we're living under a corporate and medical fascism. This is tyranny. When do we get to use the guns? No, and I'm, and, I, and I'm not, that's not a joke. I'm not saying it like that. I mean, literally, where's the line? How many elections are they going to steal before we kill these people? I mean, I, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to ask you to react to that clip. That's the kind of rhetoric now that we're having at conservative youth groups. So when people wonder why, for example, uh, Congressman Lee Zeldin was attacked at a public event in New York just a couple days ago, this is why, because people say things like this and leaders or so-called leaders, people who should be leaders, don't condemn it. Uh, I think back at how Senator McCain, when he was running for president, one of his supporters came out and um, tried to disqualify President Obama in some unfair way. I don't remember the exact details, but he said, no, 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 hold on. That's wrong. I, I don't agree with that. We don't express ourselves that way. That's leadership. And unfortunately, too many people on both sides, but certainly in this case on the Republican side, are refusing to condemn those who express themselves with hatred, those who promote a more violent society where you can get police officers killed outside the capital of the United States and where politicians normally get assaulted. This is all a result of Donald Trump and other people like him in our politics who have excused this behavior for far too long. I would point out, just to be fair, that John McCain also appointed Sarah Palin as his running mate, and she was the original Trump, you could argue. Um, one last that question, uh, Carlos Capello. There's been this narrative that the voters backing people like Trump, Gates, Bobert, they're all older Americans. But you look at this conference, these are young people. Donald Trump has energized a section of young conservatives who are pushing some authoritarian and often racist stuff. Yeah, these people have been uh, radicalized. Uh, Donald Trump and others, for their own convenience, have uh, made people believe that uh, you know, this country is being lost, that people are under attack, that uh, everything is, uh, is going to hell. And uh, look, I tell people on both sides, Mehdi, uh, we don't need a revolution in this country, despite the fact that it's deeply flawed and that we've made many mistakes along the way. I still think this is the greatest country in the world. So we don't need a revolution. We don't need to fundamentally change it. We just need to make it better every day. Politicians won't say that because they need to make people angry so they contribute online, so they show up at these events, and, of course, so that they go out and vote. But, you know, we're due for a political renaissance yeah. in this country, Matty, because I don't think uh, this is tenable for much longer.